I quite like this photo of berries, so we'll paint them in acrylic. Start by transferring the outlines of the object onto the canvas. The table is white, so we only need to paint the shadows onto the table. For the shadows, I add Payne's grey into white, and this gives me a neutral grey. From there, we will adjust this colour to match the colours of the reference photo in each area as we paint. Shadows are not uniform, they are darker close to the object and then fade lighter further away from the object. As a result, we will add more white to lighten the shadow and then more Payne's grey when we need to darken it. Even though the table is white and its natural shadow colour is grey, if you look carefully at these shadows, you will however notice that they have hints of colour in them. Some of the light is bouncing off the leaves and the berries and discolouring our grey shadows. As we paint, we will need to add these colours into the shadows in order for them to look realistic. I paint the shadow against the object and then fade it away. When I am happy with the shading, I glaze some of the reflected colour into the shadow. If a shadow accidentally extends too far, I clean my brush and then push it back with a little bit of white on the brush. The scene is quite complex, so I block in a light yellow onto the stems. This allows me to better picture and find the corresponding leaves. I then start at the top of the canvas because those leaves are the furthest away from us. To get the correct leaf and stem colours, I use cadmium yellow, sap green, crimson and raw umber. I paint one leaf at a time. Each of these leaves has a left and a right hand side, which are at different angles, so the light will affect each half differently. Then, the leaf isn't straight either. It has a curve in it, which makes the colour across each half differ as well. For this reason, I treat each leaf half separately. As I paint, I look for the different colours and tonal values in that leaf half. I block those colours in at the correct places. And then I take a look, how do those colours blend into each other? Do they blend in quickly or do they blend in slowly? And I replicate that on the canvas. To do this, I alternate between a bristle brush and a soft fulbit brush. The bristle brush is used for blocking in and the soft fulbit brush is used to get nice smooth shadings. The leaves are smooth, so many of them are reflecting the light. Now at this stage, I'm ignoring those reflections. I'm looking past them. I'll add those reflections in later. It's much easier doing it that way. The outer edge of the leaf also curls back, so I'm careful to add that short, sharp shading in as well. Once I'm happy with the shape of the leaf, I use some white or yellow to add the center and side veins to the leaf. They are added using a soft fulbit brush. If you struggle to get these lines fine enough, you can also use a rigor brush. To embed the veins into the leaf, I gently brush over them with a clean, dry fulbit. Once the one leaf is complete, move on to the next leaf. As you do, pay attention to the colors in the leaf. Depending on the age of the leaf, its colors will vary. So these color differences help to separate overlapping leaves. Overlapping leaves also cast shadows on the ones below them. Look for and paint in these shadows as they show the height between those leaves. For the stems, I use cadmium yellow, white and crimson to mix the correct colours. Each stem is round, so I paint the edges darker along their length. As with the leaves, I also look for and paint in any shadows cast on them by the surrounding leaves and berries. The rings and markings on the stems are painted using raw umber. To paint the berries, I add a little crimson into Payne's grey. I then block them in using this mixture. And as I do, note how I leave the thinnest sliver of canvas showing where two berries meet. This little sliver of canvas ensures that I don't lose the shape of each berry before I've completed painting it. The berries are smooth and shiny, so we will show their shape by adding their reflections in. 
Before doing this though, dry the painting with a hairdryer. Looking carefully at the reflections, you can see that some are from the light source, other reflections are from the sky color, and yet others are from the tablecloth. Mix up a sky color using white and cerulean blue. Mix up a light source color using cadmium yellow and crimson into white. Then using a fine round brush, gradually start adding the reflections onto each berry. Now you will notice that these reflections all have soft faded edges. So I load as little paint onto the brush as possible and then build up these reflections in layers. For the very lightest reflections, I'll use neat white. Only once I'm happy with the shape of the berry, do I paint the thin canvas edge closed. I suggest the dimples on the berries using the berry color for the shadow and a light yellow for the highlight. Dry the entire painting again, then using the sky color, add the reflections onto the leaves. As with the berries, I build these reflections up in layers, using very little paint on the brush at a time. It's easy to overdo these reflections, so only add the major ones to each leaf. And with that, the painting is complete. If you'd like to try your hand at this painting, you can follow the real-time paint-along version on our website, onlineartlessons.com. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.